Streaming has never been easier. Anyone can do it, but not many people can do it right. Laggy footage, blurry footage, or maybe your game just looks like wet hot garbage. Today, we're gonna show you all the settings to make your quality amazing, crisp and clear. Both your game, your mic, your webcam, all of it in OBS or Streamlabs on any platform you choose to use. But more importantly, I'll show you how to diagnose your specific problems using the magical stats panel. No more Googling furiously, trying random advice from random people. One look at this panel and you'll instantly know what to fix. We'll also cover how to run test streams without actually going live so you don't bother your audience. And most importantly, I will show you how to turn off dynamic bitrate because it is the worst, and I mean worst setting in the world. All of that and more is coming up, but first, thank you to our sponsor, Owned. Owned have officially done something amazing. They've created an entire scene editor and integrated it for free into Owned Pro. This means not only can you get full overlays from webcam borders, alerts, labels, and more set up in literally three clicks, but you can also also use their chatbot auto moderator and try any of their full free overlay packs without paying anything. And if you want to use literally any of the packs on their website, you can upgrade from the free version to the paid and get access to their entire library. And for a little extra a month, also get access to all of Epidemic Sound, gaining over 40,000 songs and 90,000 sound effects. That's kind of the deal of a century. So if you want to support me, check out the link in the description to try out Own Pro for free with their scene editor. And if you want, you can upgrade later. Thank you so much to Own for supporting the channel. Straight out of the gate, let me show you how to diagnose what type of lag you have and then I can show you where and what the best settings are for streaming on Twitch or YouTube. Today I'm doing most of this inside OBS because if you're having issues with lag and you aren't using OBS, well that's your first mistake to fix. Other software such as Streamlabs, Twitch Studio, etc. aren't optimized as well as OBS and I've found often increase your CPU usage by a minimum of 8% just by being open. So get OBS from the link in the description and boom, you've already saved a chunk of resources. So there are three very common issues you'll face dropped frames, skipped frames, and lagged frames. All of these are caused by different things, and most of the time new streamers will call all types of lag just dropped frames. So let's diagnose these in OBS and then we'll cover Streamlabs in a second. First, open OBS, click view and click the stats panel. You will get a lot of information such as CPU usage, storage space, current FPS, which are all helpful, but the three I wanna focus on are dropped, skipped and lagged frames, which you can see here. First, dropped frames. These are when your internet or network are having connection or stability issues. Imagine like you're trying to send video over the internet through a big tube and the frames keep leaking out of the holes. If you have dropped frames, then to fix it, you'll wanna adjust your bitrate to match your stream settings or your upload speed. Try a more stable connection such as ethernet or turn off a setting called dynamic bitrate, which again is literally the worst setting in the world. And yes, I'll show you where that is in a second. Next is lagged frames. These are seen here and these are caused by high GPU usage, which means to solve these, you need to free up room on your GPU by lowering your game settings, such as resolution, frame rate, or potentially lowering your webcam resolution in OBS from 1080p to 720p. Also, you can generally lower your stream resolution, general video settings, or other encoding settings as well. You could try closing other software that might be taking up your GPU resources. And again, I'll show you where all the settings you can change for this are in a second. Below that is skipped frames, which are high CPU usage. And again, this can be fixed by lowering your resolution, your general video settings, other encoding settings, and trying to close other software that might be taking up CPU resources. Or if possible, you can switch to NVENC or AMD encoding to utilize your GPU to encode instead of your CPU. Now, if you're a Streamlabs user, I'm sorry. They removed the stats panel when they took OBS and built the Streamlabs skin over it. I don't know why, but now you only have the notification bar. If you look in the bottom left, you'll see a small graph button. Click this and here you can see dropped frames, but it won't tell you anything else unless an issue already occurs. So if you get lagged or skipped frames, it will tell you after the problem has occurred. Personally, if I ever have an issue while streaming, I check these two locations first, but I will also open my task manager to help diagnose what is actually taking up my CPU or GPU resources. But with that, now you've diagnosed your type of lag, let's cover where the best settings are. Now, I know a lot of videos just give you a bunch of specific settings to copy without explaining in detail why, but I hope you'll forgive me. As I've always said, I hated my math teachers for doing this to me. So instead, I'm gonna make this simple for beginners while also trying to make sure you don't leave this video with no idea what to change if something goes wrong. If you understand what you're changing and why, you'll be far more likely to get better stream quality. So head to settings, click video, and first things first, we're going to pick a resolution. Now, personally, I stream 1920 by 1080p on both my base canvas and my output. 
The difference between these two settings is essentially Base Canvas is your preview window size inside OBS or Streamlabs, and the output is what your final video size is going to be when it goes to your stream. The two main resolutions you'll pick between are 1920 by 1080 or 1280 by 720. These days, 1080p tends to be the standard, but if you're on a low-end computer, 720p will be a better option for you. So if you find your OBS struggling later thanks to the Stats Panel and Task Manager, you can come back here and drop the output to 720p. That way you're scaling 1080 down to 720 for a lower resolution, but not terrible quality. Below that is our FPS or frames per second. You'll set this to either 30 or 60 most of the time. However, if you're say Australian like myself, European or another country that uses what's called PAL, you might want your FPS to be set to 25 or 50 depending on where you're sending the footage. I'm in Australia and still use 30 to 60 because it doesn't matter most of the time anymore as it's all going to YouTube streams or Twitch streams. With that, we're moving on to our output. Personally, I use advanced mode, but if you're experiencing lag, you can solve all of this with just the simple settings. So if we're doing this in the simple form, let's start with bitrate. This will determine most of your stream's quality. There is a link in the description to an article by Twitch and another by YouTube to show you bitrate settings for different resolutions. Personally, if you're doing a fast action gameplay on Twitch, I recommend 720p output and between 4500 to 6000 bitrate. If the gameplay is slower and lacks a lot of movement, then 1080p and 6000 bitrate will work just as well. Twitch bitrate is technically soft capped at 6000 and hard capped at 8000. 1000 bits is 1 megabit, so you need an upload speed that can handle the bitrate you set plus wiggle room. So for 6000 bitrate, around 10 to 12 megabits to stream at the soft cap safely. If you're not sure what your upload speed is, go to speedtest.net, linked in the description, and click test. As long as this comes up saying you have 10 to 12 steady, you should be okay. For a YouTube stream, you're going to want a much higher bitrate than Twitch, both because YouTube has better technology behind it, so you'll have better quality, but also because it transcodes every stream. This means you'll need a higher bitrate to make it look nice. But this is a good thing because your viewers can watch at lower resolutions no matter what size for creator you are. Twitch will only let big creators have transcoding, whereas YouTube gives it to everyone. For 1080p 60 frames per second, I'd recommend 12,000 bitrate, and 720p 60 FPS, I'd recommend 7,000 to 8,000 bitrate. But again, your own internet speed and stability will control this, so keep an eye on dropped frames and use the fact sheets in the description as a further guide. Now, you won't need to touch audio bitrate most likely, so we'll keep moving. Now, for encoder, this used to be so simple, but it's gotten a lot more confusing as more graphics cards have become decent and OBS has added more options to itself. So I'll try to keep it simple for you by focusing just on three. NVENC H. X264 X264 and AV1. To make this straightforward, if you're using any Nvidia card past the GTX 600, which was released in 2012, so likely any Nvidia card being used on a semi new PC, you're going to pick NVENC H264. This means you're using a special chip on the graphics card to encode the footage. This chip is separate and just used solely for encoding and decoding, so it won't affect your gameplay performance. And if you're using a graphics card from before that, you'll likely use X264, which will be using your CPU to encode and decode. Finally, AB1 is a newer encoder, and I'll be honest, I am still learning the best case for using it, and I'll link directly a video in the description by Epos Vox, who has done extensive testing if you want a deep dive. Now, if you're using an AMD card instead of a NVIDIA card, there will be AMD encoders here instead of NVIDIA, obviously. So Pick those if you want to encode on your AMD GPU. Encoder preset is below this. If your PC can handle it, you can set this to be best quality and then use the stats panel to see if it's too intense for your CPU or GPU and lower it until you see the issues resolve. That is all the simple settings done, but we need to turn off the dreaded dynamic bitrate, the worst setting in the world. So stick around still while I quickly cover some other advanced settings for you. If you decide to use advanced settings because you're an overconfident fool, a lot of this will look exactly the same as simple and work exactly the same as well. The key difference to note here is that you'll be given access to a different rate control setting. But as a streamer, you have to leave this on CBR because Twitch doesn't play nice with other rate controllers. The other difference is it gives you access to the Twitch VOD track, which despite what you think doesn't protect you from copyright strikes and it just overcomplicates things, so don't use it. The two articles I linked about bitrate in the description actually cover the advanced settings recommended as well. But I hope most of you will stick to simple, especially if you're struggling with lag. So before I show you how to turn off dynamic bitrate, let's quickly show you how to run a test stream to Twitch or YouTube and how to test and select which Twitch server is the best for you, because this is actually something you can manually pick. First, to run a test stream on Twitch, it is pretty simple. Open OBS, go to settings, go to stream, and click enable bandwidth test mode, click apply, and then go live as normal. Open up a game, chat, talk, test alerts, do everything that you would do in a normal stream, but make sure you keep the stats panel open and also your task manager open. 
make sure you're paying attention to both of these. None of what you're doing right now is going out to your viewers. It's being intercepted by Twitch and simply used as a test. If you're streaming to YouTube, you'll need to make a scheduled stream. Obviously, we've already covered that in several videos. So you make it and then set it to unlisted. This lets you not only test your stream and look at the stats panel like Twitch does, but also gives you an unlisted stream VOD on YouTube so you can review the quality later. Now, if you think that your internet is perfect and none of the dropped frames or issues are caused by you, then it could be Twitch's fault. Or in my case, I spent six months struggling with internet issues because my neighborhood had a massive fault. No one else noticed it except for the guy trying to upload 6,000 to 10,000 bit rates a second steady. This next tool literally let me diagnose it before my ISP could. It's called Twitch Test and it lets you test all the servers near you easily. I'll link it in the description. You can go there, download it, extract the zip file and then run it. It's going to need your stream key. So go to your Twitch dashboard, settings, stream and copy the primary key. Paste this in here and do not share this with anyone at all. If you give this to someone, they can stream to your channel. Over on the right, click test duration. I like to set this to medium because I'm impatient, but some smarter friends use long. This is how long the tool tests each server. Usually 30 to 60 seconds of testing is enough to tell you if there are issues. Next, select your region, either manually by clicking these boxes or use the quick select. I'm Australian, so I say other. Now click run and it will begin testing. So wait patiently. When the results are in, you want a maxed out bandwidth of 10,000 plus. We'll want the shortest RTT or round trip time and the best quality, which maxes out at 100. Once you know that, you'll go to OBS, open settings, click the stream, click the server, and rather than automatic, select the specific server that was best for you in Twitch test. I wanna shout out Nutty. I'm pretty sure I learned about this tool from him four years ago now, so credit to him. With all of this done, congratulations. You can not only diagnose your lag thanks to the stats panel and test streams, but you'll also be able to adjust your settings, your game, and more to help solve the problem you're dealing with. But for the love of God, whatever you do, make sure you go to settings, advance, scroll to network, and find Finally, turn off dynamic bitrate. This tool is meant to detect when your internet connection is limited and automatically reduce your bitrate to compensate rather than dropping frames. The issue is it doesn't fucking work. Any tiny spike will cause this to activate and tank your quality. I've alt tabbed into and out of games and for some reason it has tanked my bitrate down to nothing. And then it just causes a cascading series of issues, constantly recognizing itself as an internet issue and tanking itself further and repeating. With that turned off and your settings all fixed up, you should click here to learn how to separate all your audio sources carefully for better audio quality. I'll see you guys next week.